There are two forms in this unit that we're going to talk about writing our vectors. One you know, it's the rectangular form. That's in this form where we have our real part plus our imaginary part where A and B are integers. But if you can see from this drawing, we can also write it in relation to the angle here, which you can see we can get by the inverse tangent of Y over X. We'll get that reference angle, if you will. And I usually say to take the absolute value because our reference angles are always positive. Now, we'll have to figure out where um, in... Uh, which quadrant this is in to get the right, correct directional angle for that, but I'll go over that in examples. But essentially, the other way we write it is polar form, which is saying that we have R, that's our modulus, which is essentially the magnitude or the length of that's created from the origin there. And then we have the cosine of theta plus I, the imaginary part, sine theta. Because remember, the X part is our, or our horizontal part is our imaginary part, and our vertical part um, is corresponding to our imaginary part, so it has the I. A way we can abbreviate that, if we want, is just to say R cis um, theta. That stands for this whole thing in here. Now, if you want to be like Euler, he writes this in the form of e to the ix. And I can get into this later, especially when we do um, some of our proof-based work this semester. But that essentially is equal to, and I, let me put an r there, r times e to the x, r times the cosine of x plus i sine of x. Um, they're equivalent. Uh, we're not going to use this form in class. But if you're interested, a lot of the um, upper level textbooks in math will use this form. So I will show you a few examples converting um, each way, and then you can try those on your own. Each of those, these examples should be done without a calculator today.